What's up everybody, welcome back to the Ride and Dad channel or welcome if it's your first time, either way, very glad to have you. We have an issue, small issue, but an issue nonetheless with the RWD RS1 Reservoir uh, from the Monoshock on my Lowrider S. So let's roll the intro, we'll get into what I'm doing today. Alrighty, so uh, can you see it without having to move? Yeah, so this is where the RWD RS1 Monoshock uh, Reservoir is. It's a remote reservoir and it links there, um, came with the mount and everything. This is in its stock configuration. Uh, the problem is I have FXR Division bags, which you've seen me have in the past. Obviously I have them off now. I've been experimenting with having them off. I've decided to put them back on. Um, I'm really trying to do function over aesthetic, even though aesthetic is, um, aesthetic is number one, but function is king, if that makes sense. Like we gotta, we gotta keep it functional because that's what the whole club style is about, like functional stuff, you know? Um, so I wanna put them back on. I do not want to use my docking hardware anymore because I want them to sit more flush. That's about an inch of space on either side. So two inches, wider on the bike does make a huge difference especially when you're looking at it so i want to have them uh flush mount and i also want to not have to worry about the possibility of having the um the the flex because uh when i was riding the tail of the dragon my buddy who was behind me at the time said hey you have a lot of flex in your bags they're flexing a lot i've never had an issue like they've never broken off obviously or anything like that but obviously I don't wanna you know, ride around looking like a, a damn butterfly or whatever out here. So um, mounting them straight and having all this extra padding on the fender strut uh, to have them flush against should theoretically help. But anyway, what the problem is, is how they are and everything under full compression, uh, even probably about half compression, um, that reservoir gets in the way of where it's at. And I'm sure, uh, I, I haven't really dealt with Leather Pros that much, but I'm sure if you have Leather Pros or want Leather Pros, you're probably gonna deal with the same issue just judging on how they are because they're so low profile and, and so contoured to the bike. They're not made for that extra kind of shape. Um, so that being said, I know Olin's has a, res a remote reservoir. I can't remember where they mount theirs. Um, but I would look at for a long time and amount. I was, you know, cross mounts. I was gonna, or Kraus. I was gonna do my own, whatever. Um, what I actually came to the conclusion of getting was this $10 mount on Amazon made for LED lights. Um, this one specifically has two different pieces. Let's see if I can get it out. On the top, it comes with a long one and a short one. Um, and then they just, you have, see these little nibs. Um, they go inside and you can, they have different positions for the set screws. So you can do it like this and have them mount uh, perpendicular, the holes. Or you can do it like this and have them mount uh, parallel. So uh, it fits up to one inch. So where I'm going to put this, there's a couple different places you can put this on your bike. You can do a bunch of different options. I'm going to put it on my Bung King crash bar uh, because my Bung King is going to stay on all the time. It's a crash bar. It's a rear passenger peg. It's going to be on all the time. And if that part of the uh, bar is getting bent so bad to the point where um, the remote reservoir is done. I have bigger issues than my suspension. So um, we're gonna, I don't know where exactly, like what position I'm gonna put this in, but uh, we're gonna do it. It came, there. this comes with different sizes. This is the smaller size, there is a bigger size. Of course, I will link it in the description. Um, and it comes with different adapters. This goes all the way from, it's like one inch to 0.75 inches or something like that, like uh, three fourths. But it comes with different spacers and adapters. This is just like a, a double-sided kind of tape rubberist thing. Um, this is what I'm going to use to prevent scratching on the Bung King. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm also going to try this video since it's so short and small and simple. I'm going to try it in real time, not speeding up or anything, because there's really no need to speed anything up. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so the first step is going to be to remove the remote reservoir. Hopefully I didn't tighten it too bad. No, not bad at all. I might have to get a new bolt. Uh, new hardware and everything for this uh, at the old hardware store um, just because of how thick the new piece that we're going to mount it on is. Um, and if you wanted to see what this reservoir looks like, it's basically just like this. 
This is essentially all it is, and it mounts to your factory point on this bike at least, uh, where the chain guard is, or belt guard, if you're a simpleton and you still have the belt, but I'm bougie, got the chain. All right, I'm gonna try to figure out where I want the remote reservoir. Um, keep in mind, we got to make sure that this is, um, you know, like there's a decent amount of play because the suspension is obviously gonna move up and down. So I don't know if I want to do something like this, maybe. I guess that may be a possibility. Um, It'll be up a little bit, I guess, too, a little bit more. Um, that may get in the way with feet, though. Maybe if I do it down. Oh, that actually looks pretty cool. I have it like this, and that should be more than enough play to compress and um, lengthen and everything in the suspension. I think I'm gonna try to do it like this. Um, it'll be up like that. Shouldn't get in the way of any shoes or anything like that for this. Let's, let's hope I rarely ever have a pass. Well, I've actually never had a passenger on this bike. Rarely will in the future. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and try it like that. So change of plans with this guy. Um, this just adds too much all the way around. Um, these are already a close fit for this. <coughs> oh, sorry. This is already a close fit for uh, where I actually have. I guess I bumped the camera. This is a mess. See, this is why I don't do these styles usually because I'm I'm just a mess. Um, but it takes up too much space because this mount is already, um, where we're mounting it is already on the smallest spectrum of what it's supposed to be able to mount on uh, diameter wise. So I took it out. Um, it's not the actual bike. If I do scratch it and I really want to go back to a different look or whatever from the bunking, then you know what? I will go get it powder coated. Um, so this is about where it's gonna be. I wanna make sure I have it all the way over on that. I don't want it too far. That way if I have to replace or if I want to replace these Delrin sliders, I can and not have it be an issue. Why is this it's getting hung up on something? It's starting to piss me off. And I'm not sure what it can possibly be getting hung up on. It shouldn't be any bigger in any way. All right, I don't... I'm not sure what is going on with this. I've loosened it a bunch too, so I don't know. That seems to be fine. There's, I don't think there's anything on the bottom. That is... Okay, I feel... Oh, yeah. All right, I'm an idiot. I completely forgot about this whole piece on the bottom. So, yes, I'm stupid. Uh, it can't go any farther, so... All right. <laughs> See? Another, another mess up on a live install so now you guys are gonna think i'm an idiot so yep completely forgot about that that one is on me that's my bad forgot okay so that's obviously as far as it can go let's go ahead and slide this puppy on to see where we want it i think we're going to want it uh, that way i believe if i'm remembering yep um, so this will mount here uh, actually we could even do maybe like a halfway although that's probably going to rub too much so Let's keep it all the way like this, uh, mount it like that. So that's how it will mount. Um, that should, like I said, that should keep it away enough. Uh, maybe even uh, just like that should be perfect. Uh, keep it away enough and also give it enough flex. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and mount this all up using blue Loctite. And uh, yeah, let's start that process. Tighten this bolt I know exactly where I want it. And remove, actually we can do these first. Now the kit does, this light LED light bar mount, uh, the kit does come with a little like one time use uh, blue Loctite, but we got our own and I like this thread locker from Permatex better. Um, I actually always say Loctite and it's just thread locker. That's the Loctite is the brand for most of you guys probably know that. But um, yeah, I usually always say Loctite and I try to catch myself and I never remember. So let's go ahead and do the last one of these. And if you are searching for a bottle like this, at least in my area, the only place that I can buy it local is at hardware store, or sorry, not hardware stores, 
um, auto parts stores. All the hardware stores only have the smallish um, actual Loctite brands. So if you are looking for the Permatex one for whatever reason um, and you can't find it, try a auto parts store in your area because they might have it there. Um, and I will also say the durability of this LED light mount that we're using for a uh, remote reservoir for shock um, should be pretty good for outdoor use and everything. Uh, it is made for LED mounts on you know trucks and uh, UTVs and such like that, not to be confused with UTIs. <laughs> but yeah, so it should be pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and take this bottom one off. Uh, it actually did, the reason I'm using this Allen, if you guys are curious, is the kit did come with an Allen wrench, and this Allen wrench is actually not terrible, and this is like a real simple thing, so I figure let me just use the Allen wrench that it came with, and then I'll toss it in the trash, because there's really no reason to keep, oh, uh, Jesus. All right, thankfully I found it all. But yeah, there's really no reason to keep um, small kind of crappy Allen wrenches like this, unless you have a, a need or a niche or whatever, or you don't have enough, you can keep these and grind these down for like weird applications that you need Allen wrenches for. That is a, a very good possibility to keep these for. But they're not labeled, so that, that part is kind of a pain in the butt too. All right, get this in there. Nice righty tidy. Double check the fitment, or placement rather, on this one more time. Oh yeah, that looks good. I think that looks good. What do you guys think? Yay, nay, maybe so? I think that looks good. I really hope and think that that is enough. Um, that's what it is, and this is what it was. It was right here, and it could slide a little bit, but not much. So I really think that we are giving it enough space. Uh, and we're not kinking it too bad, I don't think. So should be okay. Yeah, oh, perfect. <sighs> let's tighten this last one up after we get some locked. Actually, let's tighten the back one up so we don't lose our placement a little bit. And now we'll go ahead and get the blue Loctite on this sucker. Do you guys like this style of video where I just jabber while I'm doing it instead of doing music? Uh, or do you prefer the music? Like I said, this was just a pretty simple one. Didn't feel like there was a need for a lot of music, background, pause stuff because it was just so straightforward. It's actually taking longer than I thought it was <laughs> going to, but it's still not bad. Um, but yeah, let me know. Do you do you like this? Would you rather me do this on all of my videos? Um, I mean, it's certainly less work for me as far as syncing up audio tracks and putting in background music and everything. Definitely a lot less work. So if you guys would like to see videos like this, please let me know. Uh, in the past, I've kept quiet when I've tried a video like this. And uh, I did not enjoy that video. I liked it better with the music, but also that was a pretty long install from what I remember on it. It wasn't something short like this. So maybe with the short ones, you know, like the ARP bolt install I did a little bit ago, stuff like that. Maybe on those videos, you guys would prefer me to do it like this. Now, for those of you wondering the torque specs on this, it, uh, it is precisely um, one and a half Ugga Duggas. I don't have, well, I have, but I'm not using a torque wrench or an impact gun or anything like that. So um, what I will be using is about six worried that they're going to cross thread turns, <laughs> um, which is about approximately the same as one and a half Ugga Duggas. So I think we're good there. Um, they come with locking rings on here, but I use Loctite anyway, so that should be good. The downside to this is that I can't do the 100% finished install for you because uh, this bolt is just not long enough, like I kind of predicted in the beginning. It's just not long enough for this application. So I'm going to go to the hardware store later on, and I'll just get a new bolt, a larger bolt and nut for this. But, I mean, that's it. It's going to sit like this. It can move freely if it needs to. Um, the nice plus also is because of how this is, it actually will put like a stop to this area. So it should be good. Uh, I don't foresee having any issues with this. 
If you think this is a good design or if you think it is a stupid design, please let me know either way. Uh, I'm gonna finish this up, put the bags on, and I guess that's about it. So let's turn you guys around so I can tell you guys thank you and tell you what to do next. All right, so we just did the install. Um, you guys watched the entire thing, no audio at all. So like I said, let me know how you like the style. If you dislike it, okay, this is the last one I'll do. Every once in a while, I try a little bit of a different thing. Um, is what it is. Uh, hopefully it looks good total with the bags on and everything like that. Um, the other thing I just thought about and I just looked at on my own was lean angle. The way it's positioned, it's in between where the primary cover is and that, um, that crash bar and the angle that it says, I, I don't foresee it being an issue, but actually before I put the bags on, uh, I am gonna dump the bike over on the crash bars and see exactly just to make sure where all my lean angles are and make sure I have enough clearance because obviously the last thing I want is one, to have a dangerous issue where I scrape a hard part that doesn't move, um, but two, to scrape enough either not knowingly or knowingly on accident or whatever um, of that reservoir where it just starts leaking because that would be that would be terrible obviously so yeah um, I think it's cool also shows off that reservoir mount even more um, for you know since I have the bags on it but let me know what you guys think of this if you have a better product uh, I'm not opposed to changing the mount I've seen other ones where they mount to the primary bolts and everything and like I said just for my application this seems to be the best option it is also cheap so I can always just change and move around. It's a super easy thing to just make different in the future. So let me know, drop your suggestions. If you got any and parts links and all that stuff, obviously the link to this part will be in the description. Um, you know, it was just Amazon, pretty cheap. And until the next time guys, ride safe, have fun. Thank you guys for watching very much. Make sure to check out all the links in my description. Uh, don't forget to check out Tucker Speed. I have an affiliate link and a coupon code from them as always in the description. Check out all my past videos and the playlist links in the description as well. And until the next time guys, ride safe, have fun. Dad out.